Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Today in this video I will show you all the ins and outs of the parquet and delta file format, which, let's be honest, became a de facto standard today for storing the data. So stay tuned. So what's the deal with parquet and delta formats? With amounts of data growing exponentially in recent time, one of the biggest challenges became finding the most optimal way to store various data flavors. Unlike in the not so far past, uh, when relational databases were considered the only way to go, organizations now want to perform analysis over raw data. Think of social media sentiment analysis, audio, video files and so on, which usually couldn't be stored in traditional relational way. Uh, or storing them in traditional way would require significant effort and time, which increased the overall time for analysis. Another challenge was to somehow stick with the traditional approach to have data stored in a structured way, but without the necessity of uh, designing complex and time-consuming ETL uh, operations, ETL workloads to move this data into the enterprise data warehouse. Additionally, what if half of data professionals in your organization are proficient with, let's say, Python, which is typical for data scientists and data engineers, and the other half, like data analysts, with SQL? Would you insist that Pythonists learn SQL or vice versa? Or would you prefer a storage option that can play to the strengths of your entire uh, data team? I have good news for you. Something like this already exists since 2013 and it's called Apache Parquet. Before I show you ins and outs of the Parquet file format, there are at least five main reasons why Parquet is considered a de facto standard for storing data nowadays. Data compression. By applying various encoding and compression algorithms, Parquet file provides reduced memory consumption. Columnar storage. This is of paramount importance in analytic workloads, where fast data read operation is the key requirement. But more on that later in this video. Language agnostic. As already mentioned previously, developers may use different programming languages to manipulate the data in the parquet file. Open source format, meaning you are not locked with a specific vendor. And finally, support for complex data types. We've already mentioned that Parquet is a column-based storage format. However, to understand the benefits of using the Parquet file format, we first need to draw the line between the row-based and column-based ways of storing the data. In traditional row-based storage, the data is stored as a sequence of rows. Something like this you may see on your screen now. Now, when we are talking about analytical scenarios, some of the common questions that your users may ask are how many balls did we sell? How many users from the USA bought a t-shirt? What is the total amount spent by customer Maria Adams? How many sales did we have on January 2nd? To be able to answer any of these questions, the engine must scan each and every row from the beginning to the very end. So to answer the question, how many users from the USA bought a t-shirt? The engine has to do something like this. Essentially, we just need the information from two columns, product for t-shirts and country for the USA, but the engine will scan all five columns. This is not the most efficient solution, I think we can agree on that. Let's now examine how the column store works. As you may assume, the approach is quite different. In this case, each column is a separate entity, meaning each column is physically separated from other columns. Going back to our previous business question, the engine can now scan only those columns that are needed by the query, which are product and country, while skipping scanning the unnecessary columns. And in most cases, this should improve the performance of the analytical queries. Ok, that's nice, but the column store existed before Parquet, and it still exists outside of Parquet as well. So what is so special about the Parquet format? Parquet is a columnar format that stores the data in row groups. Wait, what? Wasn't it enough complicated even before this? Don't worry, it's much easier than it sounds. Let's go back to our previous example 
and depict how Parquet will store this same chunk of data. Let's stop for a moment and explain the illustration you see, as this is exactly the structure of the Parquet file. I've intentionally omitted some additional things, but we will come soon to explain that as well. Columns are still stored as separate units, but Parquet introduces an additional structure, called row group. Why is this additional structure so important? You'll need to wait for an answer for a bit. In online analytical processing scenarios, we are mainly concerned with two concepts, projection and predicates. Projection refers to a select statement in SQL language, which columns are needed by the query. Back to our previous example, we need only the product and country columns, so the engine can skip scanning the remaining ones. Predicates refer to the WHERE clause in SQL language, which rows satisfy criteria defined in the query. In our case, we are interested in T-shirts only, so the engine can completely skip scanning row group 2, where all the values in the product column equal socks. Let's quickly stop here, as I want you to realize the difference between various types of storage in terms of the work that needs to be performed by the engine. Row store. The engine needs to scan all 5 columns and all 6 rows. Column store. The engine needs to scan 2 columns and all 6 rows. Column store with row groups. The engine needs to scan 2 columns and 4 rows. Obviously, this is an oversimplified example with only 6 rows and 5 columns, where you will definitely not see any difference in performance between these 3 storage options. However, in real life, when you're dealing with much larger amounts of data, the difference becomes more evident. Now, the fair question would be, how Parquet knows which row group to skip or scan? Parquet file contains metadata. This means every Parquet file contains data about data, information such as minimum and maximum values in the specific column within the certain row group. Furthermore, every Parquet file contains a footer which keeps the information about the format version, schema information, column metadata, and so on. I'll give you one performance tip. In order to optimize the performance and eliminate unnecessary data structures, such as row groups and columns, the engine first needs to get familiar with the data, so it first reads the metadata. It's not a slow operation, but it still requires a certain amount of time. Therefore, if you are querying the data from multiple small parquet files, query performance can degrade, because the engine will have to read metadata from each file. So, you should be better off merging multiple smaller files into one bigger file, but still not too big. I hear you, I hear you, Nicola, what is small and what is big? Unfortunately, there is no single golden number here, but for example, Microsoft Azure Synapse Analytics recommends that the individual Parquet file should be at least a few hundred megabytes in size. Can it be better than this? Yes, with data compression. So we've explained how skipping the scan of the unnecessary data structures may benefit your queries and decrease the overall performance. But it's not only about that. Remember when I told you at the very beginning that one of the main advantages of the Parquet format is the reduced memory footprint of the file. This is achieved by applying various compression algorithms. There are two main encoding types that enable Parquet to compress the data and achieve astonishing savings in space. Dictionary encoding. Parquet creates a dictionary of the distinct values in the column and afterward replaces real values with index values from the dictionary. Going back to our example, this process looks something like this. And you might think, why this overhead, when product names are quite short, right? Ok, but now imagine that you store the detailed description of the product, such as long arm t-shirt with application on the neck. And now imagine that you have this product sold million times. Yeah, instead of having million times repeating value long arm blah blah, Parquet will store only the index value, integer instead of text. Run length encoding with bit packing. When your data contains many repeating values, run length encoding or RLE abbreviated algorithm may bring additional memory savings. Can it be better than this? 
Yes, with the Delta Lake file format. Okay, what the heck is now Delta Lake format? To put it in plain English, Delta Lake is nothing else but the parquet format on steroids. When I say steroids, the main one is the versioning of parquet files. It also stores a transaction log to enable keeping the track of all changes applied to the parquet file. This is also known as acid compliant transactions. Since it supports not only acid transactions, but also time traveling, like rollbacks, audit trails and so on, and data manipulation language statements, such as insert, update and delete, you won't be wrong if you think of the Delta Lake as a data warehouse on the Data Lake, or Data Lake House. To conclude, Parquet file format is one of the most efficient storage options in the current data landscape, since it provides multiple benefits, both in terms of memory consumption, by leveraging various compression algorithms, and fast query processing by enabling the engine to skip scanning unnecessary data. That's all folks! If you enjoyed this video, please click this like button down below. Of course, if you want to stay tuned with the latest news from Data, Power BI, Microsoft Fabric uh, World, then consider subscribing to Data Mozart channel. See you soon again!